Your name, your numbers, your personal information. It all adds up to a picture of you. But today, thieves armed with computers and telephones can steal the reputation you've worked a lifetime to build. My credit was ruined. And we would get a Visa card with a limit of, say, $10,000. We would drain every penny you could get out of it. It cost me time from work. It cost me tears. Within two, three, maybe four hours, we would destroy everything that they worked their entire life to have. $120,000 worth of bad debt was racked up in my name. It can be emotionally devastating. I've seen some people that, that feel like their life is coming to an end because this has occurred to them. Eventually, I thought suicide was my only option in clearing my name from identity theft. There was no other way that I could conceive of clearing my name. Identity theft is today's fastest growing crime, one that can touch you anytime, anywhere. The idea of identity theft is not new. Criminals have been passing bad checks and forging signatures for years. But in the new age of computers, the internet, and instant credit, the opportunities for crooks to victimize you has exploded. Identity theft has definitely replaced armed robbery, house robberies, um, burglaries, people at ATM machines. Nobody wastes their time with that anymore. Identity theft, I think, has become the crime of choice. What is identity theft? The simplest example is if someone steals your wallet and pretending to be you uses your credit cards, checks, or ID. That's the old-fashioned way. Yes, I'd like to place an order, please. Today, thieves can steal much more and much item? faster using the Let telephone and the internet. If criminals get your personal information, especially your social security or credit card numbers, they can get cash and merchandise charged to you, and you're guilty until proven innocent. Uh, name as it appears on the credit card. My name is uh, Gloria Gibbs. My credit card number is 4012. I'm Gloria Gibbs. I'm sorry, Mrs. Gibbs. I'm showing your card is over its limit. That's impossible. I pay it off every month. Yes, I'd like to arrange a wire transfer for my savings account, please. My name is Gloria Gibbs. I'm sorry, Mrs. Gibbs, but there's non sufficient funds in your checking account. I can't accept this check. That's not possible. I know I have... In this video, idea. we'll show you how to protect yourself against identity theft and what to do if you are victimized. While everyone recognizes identity theft as a serious crime, few of us realize the personal cost to victims. Most people think their credit can be easily cleaned up and fraudulent charges corrected. Jennifer Diavis peterson tells a different story. It was a full-time job trying to clear my name. Jennifer was plunged into a nightmare when a crime ring got a hold of her name and social security number. They burrowed into her financial life and nearly destroyed it. I first realized that I was a victim of identity theft one day when I answered the phone and the voice on the other end accused me of being two payments late on a Suburban. And when I quickly tried to explain that I didn't own a Suburban, the man on the other end told me that I most certainly did and confirmed my name and social security number. And with that, he said, you do own a Suburban, you are two payments late, and I'm not the only one looking for you, Missy. Over the years, Jennifer had built up an excellent credit history. She and her husband owned several rental houses in addition to their home. But her good name and credit was a gold mine for the thieves to the tune of $120,000. The thieves opened seven different fraudulent checking accounts and 35 different credit accounts. Jewelry credit cards, the automobile purchase, cellular phone accounts, and mail order purchases. The following month, the bills started coming due. The mailbox became my greatest enemy because Although I was filling out all of the required paperwork and proving my innocence and everything else that I could, repeatedly the creditors would return reply that they had indeed verified that these accounts were mine, that I opened them. These creditors were threatening to garnish my wages. They were threatening to put liens on my house. The damage was done in less than a month, but more than five years later, Jenny is still suffering the effects. I can't get the most basic credit card. I can't have my name on a mortgage. 
the only way that we could have a house is if my name is not on any of the paperwork anywhere. Police detective Ed Hewitt has been thrown into the fight against identity theft. As a member of his department's white collar crime unit, he sees it growing every day. Identity theft is extremely prevalent. Um, it has gone, I think, to what we're at it as uh, epidemic proportions at this point in time. As Detective Hewitt followed up leads, he uncovered hundreds of victims. One long trail led to this woman. Sarah led an identity theft ring that's taken hundreds of thousands of dollars from other people's accounts. Ironically, she requested that her identity be hidden. Oh, and Sarah's not her real name. Once we got a credit card, we would order high cost items, digital cameras, camcorders, things that we knew would move quick, car stereos, things like that. We would either sell them over marketplaces on the internet or we would trade them for drugs. Sarah was a fascinating case because um, we had been pursuing her for quite some time. Uh, we knew that she was very sophisticated from the standpoint of being able to really truly use the internet to find every single detail. Sarah dealt in what she calls profiles. A profile is a collection of your personal information, such as your name, address, social security number, employer, etc. As she got deeper into crime, she employed a gang of methamphetamine addicts to bring her profiles of potential victims. I would look for the person that was strung out the most, the person that would steal from their own mom. Those were the things I looked for. I wanted the dirtiest, rottenest person that was, the, to be honest, not the smartest. <laughs> to do what worked for me. These couriers fanned out to steal financial information from mailboxes, dumpsters, recycling bins, and business records. They enjoyed jumping into those garbage cans, taking these bags out, and bringing them to you. It was like a little kid, look what I got, look what I got, because they actually got a rush out of it. Okay. Oh yeah, this is good. Here I am with a garbage bag full of papers. I could get nothing, but usually I got a lot. Credit card. And we would put their information on the internet and it would give us an answer immediately of what kind of credit limit they had. And then she would move on to convert that information to ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000, whatever the potential of the profile would offer. At one time I had had um, mail stolen out of my mailbox. And it was all ripped open, but all my checks were in there. So I figured, okay, it was just a bunch of neighborhood kids. Well, now, I don't think it was neighborhood kids. When Eva Tiller started receiving big bills for expensive jewelry, she reported it to police. Sarah had struck again. Eva worked with Detective Hewitt to build a case against Sarah, putting her behind bars. I was furious, and I wanted to find these people. I wanted them caught so they couldn't do this to anybody else. A devastating aspect of Sarah's operation was her choice of victims. I say 80% of my profiles were from senior citizens. It's horrible, but I mean, it's really true. I mean, older people definitely have better credit. Younger people nowadays have 19 credit cards, and I don't want that profile. I want the person that has got one visa, one gas card, and that's it. The perfect profile is the person that has one credit card, owns their home, and that's usually a senior. I didn't even think about it. Not once did I think about who I was hurting, or, or what I was doing to somebody. And you know what I think my little mechanism was, was I never saw the person. I never saw their face. I never ever thought of it as anything more than a piece of paper. It cost me time from work. It cost me tears. I mean, I was really upset. I didn't know what to do. How can you protect your credit and your reputation from being stolen? There are two basic ways to reduce your chance of being victimized guard your personal information, and keep track of your financial statements and any suspicious activity. The first step to guarding your information is to make sure your mail is secure. Having a locking mailbox is a must. If you can't lock your mailbox, consider a box at your U.S. post office. Always pick up your mail as soon as you can, and never put outgoing mail in your mailbox. Putting the red flag up, thank you very much for telling us you've got some money in your mailbox. No, <laughs> that's not a very good idea. Criminals can turn your trash into cash. Don't put documents with personal information in trash cans or recycle bins. Protect your garbage by using a cross-cut shredder to shred sensitive documents. 
Crosscut shredders cut papers both lengthwise and diagonally. They're a little more expensive than straight shredders, but they make it much harder for a thief to reconstruct your papers. These people do dig through your trash, they'll find linear shredded stuff, and they will take the time to stick them back together. Don't give more information than you need to when conducting your business. Be especially careful with your social security number. And it's a bad idea to have your social security number printed on your checks. Look at this check. If a thief gets a hold of this, he can learn your name, address, phone number, social security number, where you bank, and your account number. Get rid of the unnecessary print. Limit the cards in your wallet or purse to just what you really use. For example, most people don't really need to carry their social security card. The less information that's in your wallet, the less damage done if it's stolen. Hello. Never give out any personal information to anyone who calls you on the phone. Criminals may tell you that you need to verify personal details. Legitimate companies will not call you and ask you to give them sensitive information over the phone. No, I don't think I want to give you any information. Goodbye. Carefully check your credit card and bank statements for unauthorized transactions. If you find anything suspicious, notify the institution right away. Yes, I found some strange charges on my account. Order a copy of your credit report at least once a year. Look for any accounts you didn't open. Also, you can see if there have been excessive credit checks. This could be a sign that someone is trying to steal your identity. Hello, I've noticed some unauthorized charges to my account. If you've been victimized, notify the institution involved immediately. Close any fraudulent accounts. Then contact your local police and file a police report. Be sure to get a copy of the report. Get in touch with the fraud departments of at least one of the major credit reporting bureaus. The faster you report a fraud, the less damage there will be. You will receive training today, fraud fighting kits, and assistance. Identity theft is an exploding crime that is especially devastating to older Americans. That's why AARP and the Washington State Attorney General's Office have teamed up to help organize and lead the fight against fraud. The bottom line is we are very excited at the prospects of what we can accomplish in partnership with you as the prime educators. At training sessions like this one, people all across Washington State are learning to become fraud fighters. These sessions are helping raise awareness of the growing problem of identity theft and give practical information on fighting fraud. What they do. To learn more about identity theft and the Fraud Fighter program, visit the Washington State Attorney General's website at www.atg.wa.gov. Don't let someone else become you and spend your money. Guard your money and your good name by becoming wise to identity theft.